measured up all the distances between these buttons we've gone taken one measurement from the left one measurement from the right and then we've taken the length of each one as well and now it's time to cut them up <laughs> So basically the last time we did this, we made an absolute meal out of cutting the insulation. We were outside measuring up like as best we could and then trying to cut with this mini circular saw. And it was basically shredding the insulation as it went. So it made so much dust everywhere. Um, and we didn't know how to cut it, like we'd never done it before. But this time, uh, if we figured out if you just use a nice standard sort of knife and a straight edge, score it once and then cut all the way through, it just works treat. Also it took ages last time. And By ages, we mean like a whole day, like a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just, we're just flying through it now. We're nearly done. <sighs> okay, let's go fit the insulation board. the morning just uh, getting the insulation into the battens and foil taping as well just so it has a bit of a vapor barrier on the floor and we think it looks pretty good actually Decent. we've done all right spaceship status again yeah so today's the only dry day this week um and it's a pretty big priority to get the solar panels up so that's the next priority of the day so lauren and i are going to get on with that You can see they're all fitted up on the roof. So I put a mastic strip underneath. Um, I then put, drilled a hole for these two screws for each bracket, put Sikaflex underneath and then compressed it down. We also connected the solar panels together using MC4 connectors and a 20 amp fuse in the positive line. So yeah, it looks like that. And then there's a gland on that side that you can see. Um, so we've wired the two solar panels in parallel connected them together through the 20 amp fuse, then through the gland into the roof. And then from the roof, we've run it down the side wall um, and that will go to the solar charge controller. In the meantime, I'm gonna make a template um, for the ply um, subfloor. So my plan is to use this brown paper, roll it all the way out. I'm gonna cut all the way around here, nice and neat, best I can, um, and try and make a template. So we've got a template cut right into the corners all the way around, 
all the way onto the back piece and then up into that corner as well. So I'll just continue doing that for the whole back of the van, we'll see how it goes. So most of the subfloors in, and we've just boxed out the wheel arch covers. Um, so they're all covered up now um, with ply boxes. So I guess the next step really is to run the cable. Um, the only thing is we need the battens on the wall so that we can tack some of the, the cable to it, um, which we haven't really done yet. So can't really do that. So we're going to crack on with another job um, and fit the reverse camera. So I'm just uh, figuring out which wire I need to tap off for the reverse camera, which you can see over there. Um, so what I've done is use this device here. I think it's the green wire. So I've put that through the loop and you can currently see we've got 0 point, 0 0.4 amps going through it. So if I get my sister to put it into reverse, that should turn on the reverse light down here. And then this number should jump up. Okay, Leah. Cool, so you saw it jump up there and the reverse lights come on. So now there's now power going to the reverse light. So that's the cable I need to tap off. This afternoon we're just installing the ply floor so Amir cut this all to shape yesterday and so today we've got the lines where the battens are and then we've put in some pilot holes along the battens and then countersunk them you might notice I've over countersunk but it doesn't matter and then we just put a screw in each one we bought a Craig jig jig ah. <laughs> it's just Craig, isn't it? <laughs> so today we set out on a mission to figure out whether it was worth the, what, £100? Yeah, £100. 100 and a bit? <laughs> How much? I think I got it for, it was on offer actually, I got it for 100 Okay. That's still ridiculous though, isn't it? I just, I don't for a know. Piece, for a piece of plastic. But I'm not being funny, we've done, we've done four Craig hole thingies. Craig, like... Pocket holes. Pocket holes and screwed it in. And I'm not being funny. It's already been worth its weight in time. Twenty-five pound a screw so far. <laughs> I'm worth every penny. Am I right? Am I right? So we are Craig jigging um, our wheel arch covers. So exciting! Okay, so there's a couple of settings that you have to alter as per like the thickness of material you're using. This is twelve millimeter ply, and then there's a clamp around this side. Can't see it the other side because it's a box. And you just clamp that in. Excuse me. And so that's clamped now, so that's tight. And then basically you have to put this like collar on the Craig specific drill bit. And then that's that collar stops it going too far through. Because we, we set it up that way. So here goes. You ready? Are you ready? For the big reveal. Oh wow, okay, I butchered that one. But that is a that is a pocket hole, is it not? It basically means um you don't need angle brackets and stuff, which on Willow we used everywhere, just like angle bracket, angle bracket. Yeah. Yes. So first use, rate Craig out of ten. Ten out of ten. Yeah. 10 out of 10. I feel 10 out of 10 too. 10 out of 10. Just easy, isn't it? I think a lot of people like in the carpentry world don't like pocket holes. Um, I think they think it's cheating. What would my dad say? Maybe it is. I haven't told my dad that we've got a Craig jig yet. My dad's a carpenter. I think he'd disown us. <laughs> well, he'd disown you. He would never speak to me again. <laughs> we'll take back all the tools I borrowed. <laughs> oh God. Let's not, Let's not tell him. Let's not tell him. We just put in the buttons up. Um, on the wall so we can attach the tongue groove panelling to it. Um, so we've got this 18 mil um, by 44 mil. I think it's plain square edged white wood or something from Wix. Um, it's pretty strong stuff and it's kind of bendy as well so we can sort of bend it to this the curve of the van. We've found some like mounting points or anchor points which are really structurally like sound in the van. So that's this bar here all the way along is solid. Um, this bit here as well. So we've put a screw one into there one into there um, and that holds it 
pretty rigid. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the um, what's it called? Like the tension, torque. Yeah, the tension in it is, well, it's, it's something else. It's rock solid, and it's um, stable all the way to the top. Yeah. And once you clad the whole thing and everything pins together, and we put upper cabinets up, it'll stiffen the whole thing. Spent a bit of time um, putting security cameras into the van, which we did in Willow as well. So we have four security cameras, one at the front, one at the back, and then one on each side um, with a screen on the inside. And what it means is that if there's any noises outside or we're not sure what's going on, we can turn it on and it will fire up all the cameras. And then you can have sort of 360 camera footage of around the van, just so you don't have to like look outside the window and you know, don't know what's going on. Um, so I spent a bit of time installing that. Uh, so we've got two on the roof and two on the sides. The side cameras look like this. So all the cameras have infrared lights that go the whole way around, which is really good at night. Um, so you can sort of have night vision. So yeah, really happy with them. So we've got that one on the side. We've then got one up on the roof up there. We've got another one, another side camera just there. And then the last camera is That'll give us a view all the way around the van. I'm so happy that we've gone for them again because we went for them in Willow because it was um, meant to be just, just me living in Willow. And so obviously security was kind of a big question and I hate, oh my God, can you think of anything scarier than like hearing a noise in the night and having to like get out or look through a window or something? Not yeah. about that. So it's also, also because it's infrared, you won't be able to see out in the dark, but you can yeah. see because the camera's infrared. Definitely. It's just Definitely. amazing, such a... It's quite a simple, simple yeah, setup, really but simple. it works really, really well. Yeah. It's also it's a really good deterrent. Massive peace of mind as well. Um, each of the lights has the infrared ring on it, which is red at night. And you can see it really clearly, so yeah. that they're always on. Um, and it's a massive deterrent because no one's going to walk up to a camera that's got red lights staring at you. Hopefully. Hopefully. Don't you dare. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> and it hardly takes any power. Yeah, yeah, barely draws any power at all. Um, this time we're not having a wall between the cab and the living area. So if you did see something on the cameras, you could hop right into the cab, start up the engine and roll them out. But now we're just running cables, uh, running them through conduit, uh, drilling through the metal, using the step drill bit again, and then some rubber grommets to make sure um, it doesn't rub. But yeah, it seems to go well. So one thing we've noticed with the van build is that there's stuff just gets everywhere. You've got tools, you've got the equipment you're installing, you've got wood, everything just gets in the way. Um, and I built this massive workbench, which is great. We've got a load of storage underneath. But the only downside to it is that you have to walk all the way around to the other side and then try and pull something out. It's all a little bit fiddly. Basically, I thought it would be a good idea to put some more shelving into the garage, some more storage, so we can store wood, um, timber battens, and also the tools. And how far out do we want it to come? Do you reckon like 60? 70? Yeah, no more than that, because I'll sort of... Should we do 60? Just get in the way, yeah. 60, and then we'll do a, a thing there. Yeah. Look at uh, cos theta, because of the angle, so the angle is 45, so cos 45 equals 300, sorry, h, so h equals 300, cos 45. Who's in Pythagoras theorem? For the second time in my life since I left school, I have to use Pythagoras. I don't think anybody but you remembers that. I know, I know, it's one of those things you just told. No, Larry. But um, I'm, basically, we know the distance that we want this uh, diagonal support to go. We know how we don't know how far it's going to come yet because I just don't know that stuff off the top of my head. So I'm just trying to work out what this length needs to be outside to outside, and then we'll do 45 degree mitre cuts to make essentially frame that is something like that.
have new shelves and they are revolutionising the workspace. Um, Clearly. It's such a mess already. <laughs> it's such a mess already, but hey-ho. So this is just for tools, consumables, everything. Everything except everything we have over here, which is already such a mess. But at the top we have timber buttons, TNG, whatnot, and then the next one down is for sheet material that and we've already cut into. You can also just about see the countertop that we're going to install, which is under there as well. It's actually really handy just being able to like grab tools, use them and then put them back. Um, previously what we did is we have a, a shelving unit right at the back of the garage on top of the workbench, um, which is great. I love it. I built it. It's good. But <laughs> it's so high up some of the stuff like you have to climb up on a, like, a step ladder. I thought that's no good if we're using stuff all the time. The last couple of weeks uh, we've had everything under here, which has been good but not as good as this. It sounds silly, but... Makes a big difference. It does make a big difference. I think spending, you know, an hour or two just building some shelves just to make you more productive actually saves more than an hour or two of looking for, for stuff. Um, so now we've finished that, we've got to go sort out the upper cab in the van. Uh, we've already got it insulated. We're going to put ply down, uh, vertical battens going up to support the sort of the face frame of it. Battens at the back of the upper cab to hold the tongue and groove in place, um, which we're going we're gonna to pin that in this time. And then that's pretty much going to be ready for spraying soon. Bold. Call me out, tiger. Call me out, why don't you love? Lift me up higher. Above the clouds, won't you love? When the scenery is right, go right in. I want to fall deep within. Don't leave me hanging just because I'm too proud. So, what we did was insulate the upper cab tray. Um, we put a baton of wood across the front, bits of ply for the floor. And then we put some vertical beams in, which we still need to finish off. Um, and then we've put a frame behind everything um, to hold the insulation in. So, so this beam here is screwed to the metal of the van. Um, there's a metal beam in there. And then we scribed, we scribed this line here all the way across um, to follow. And it's an ever so slight curve. We've got pl uh, plywood on this side and this side. So we had to make a template all the way around there. So it's cut pretty close all the way around to the back and there's a baton running down the centre. We can screw the ply to this baton here um, just to hold that down. And we can also screw down the centre uh, to make sure it doesn't lift at all. Uh, we then put the insulation up against the upper cab, which is nice and thick, and then put these battens in as well, which we're then going to put in some cross beams across here just to make sure that it all stays in place. We had a bit of progress today, actually. Um, it doesn't look like a lot, but it really is. It's kind of hard to, it's hard to explain it for a van build because and not a lot of stuff changes at the beginning. Like you see, obviously, insulation goes in, big change, or sound editing goes in, floor goes in, blah, blah, blah. But then you get to a point and you're doing a lot of, um, I don't know what the word is. You're doing a lot of like preparation work, ready for the next step, like putting the strapping on the wall and framing out different areas. Um, and then once you put all that, the, the final panelling on it, it looks really good. But today was just sort of one of those days where we were just having to make templates, cut stuff out fit it, take it out, refit it, bits of, like scribe lines, bits and pieces like that. But that's pretty much alongside shopping at Wix again, because that's oh all God, we ever do. Wix. All we ever do is shop at Wix, but. It's been one of those days of like small changes, but we're setting ourselves up for big changes. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good way is. of putting it yeah. to be fair. Um, so next week, ha ha, next week will be a different My story. My outdated <laughs> Somebody do me the courtesy, dress me down. I'm not that old yet, I'm far too young to not stand.